This video will show the potential for real-time interaction between multiple plants and multiple users inside of the APS. Now, as you can see on my screen right now, I've got a little bit different setup than you might have seen in some other videos where I'm actually running two users here uh, in separate windows. And so here on the left-hand side, uh, just to acquaint ourselves with what we're looking at, this particular master scheduler is working in his supply plant. Each one of the vertical tabs here on the left hand side is the name of the plant that's set up inside of the APS. And inside that supply plant, just to keep things relatively simple, I just have one resource called my intermediate resource. And I'm producing a product called a supply item. That's the actual name of my product in this case. I'm making that on Monday and I'm just looking at a real short two day schedule here Tuesday of the following day. I can also see to illustrate the concept of having multiple users down here across the bottom part of the screen it shows that I actually have two master schedulers logged into the system at this point in time and this particular connection is the first one and this one is logged in as the administrator username. You can have any number of plants and any number of users connected simultaneously inside of the APS and so a key advantage of that is that each user has their own views and ways that to interact with the production scheduling system. And so here over on the right hand side, that's where as you can see I've got it logged in as a separate user here called user number one, looking at the same plan coordinated together but in a slightly different way. I can have different tabs set up over here appropriate to those views. You'll notice that I've also got the graphical Gantt chart looking at a different section of the planning horizon here Tuesday and Wednesday of that same week and I'm also looking at an entirely different plant, that final assembly plant. So being able to customize your particular views is really important when you're talking about a multi-user environment. Uh, likewise, depending on how you'd like to set up the security, I could be over here in my uh, administrator login, and if I wanted to look at what was happening in my final assembly plant, that's possible too. I can just click that, and there's the same exact schedule, still happening at Tuesday 9 a.m., by using my labels and my particular views that are appropriate for me. So lots of flexibility really designed to be able to handle any number of plants, any number of users. Now to show the real-time interaction between plants, what I'm going to do is introduce an exception in my supply plant. This supply item actually is going to feed into another plant and another product. So this illustrates that concept of distributed manufacturing processes. And of course, if you had a single plant, much of the same concepts would apply as well. Now, I know over here on the right hand side because of the low resolution that I'm recording this video in, it's a little hard to see what these labels are, but as I point to that particular item, you'll see it pops up with my tool tips that illustrate what's actually happening there. Now, a couple of key things to pay attention to are we can always come back to these labels. I can see that there is no constraining operation right now. I basically just have to worry about the clock, which is the start time of this particular operation. It shows me that I'm expecting to receive 960 quantity of this particular supply item, and it's due to be in-house on August 31st at 9 a.m. Now I'm going to change that to illustrate some concepts. You'll also notice that right now both operations in each schedule are both green, which is great. I'm going to introduce some exceptions here, and just to refresh our memory about those, all of the labels and color codes are uh, visible and customizable here. So green is good, everything is running on time, and what I'm going to introduce in this case is in my supply plant a capacity bottleneck and that in turn is going to introduce a material bottleneck in the downstream final plant as that happens. So this is to illustrate that real-time communication across plants. Right now let's say on that Monday in my supply plant that resource is unavailable for some reason. So I'm going to change its standard availability here, the calendar pattern for it, just by right clicking on it. I'll open up that occurrence and I'm going to change it from its normal online availability to being offline. And I'll also put in a note here to remind myself that this is not a typical occurrence. Now, when I apply this, when I save and close this, not only will you see the supply plant adjust its schedule, but because of the way I have my material constraints set up and the flow of my products across plants, you will also see at the same time on the right hand side of the screen, the automatic rescheduling based on constraints of downstream operations. And this is a very simple example just to illustrate the concepts, but the same principles apply no matter how complex your flow of materials and resources might be.
So when I save and close this, you'll notice that both plants at the same time are automatically rescheduled based on those constraints. In my supply plant, there's my lack of capacity there on that Monday with the note that I entered. That causes that particular operation to go red. That's a capacity bottleneck. And what that capacity bottleneck in turn caused was the shift on my downstream plant where I'm trying to produce this final product, but I'm not able to produce it in time and I get a lot more feedback about what the issues are. That the constraining operation there is the first operation, number 10. It's a material constraint. Um, it's affecting the availability of that item called supply item. You'll also notice that the due date has changed. So instead of being in-house on August 31st, now it's September 1st as well. So even if I were unable to resolve this exception, at least now everyone on my planning team can have that visibility to see what's happening in real time. And again, being able to configure the views so that each user is getting exactly the information that he or she needs is a very powerful feature and really increases the ability of many companies to react to these kinds of exceptions and determine what the next best steps are to do.